Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, today I'm going to talk you through one of the most used champions in the game. Right from an early game account all the way up to an end game account. We're talking about an uncommon champion. The Beast, the Armager, is coming in. And the coolest thing is you can pick him up in the shop. Yeah, you can pick him up in the market and you can book him from picking up extra copies from the market. No books required. So this dude is insane, honestly. Like, I've got him on my free-to-play, which is where we're going to start with this video. But I also still use him on my main endgame account, fully stacked account. And he still does a lot of work in the endgame. So this is, this is a champion whose build will change as your game develops, as your gear develops. But let me talk you through what he's all about. So this is my free-to-play account. We're on Armager. And he's got two skills, right? He's an uncommon champion. He's a defense-based champion, which means that all of his attacks scale through defense. Kind of means that it's easy to keep or easier to keep him alive because his damage is also the way he stays alive. Now, on the free-to-play, you can see here I've got a destroy set on. That's because one of the primary things that I use him for in the free-to-play is actually in my Scarab boss team. And I'll talk you through that and I'll show you that team in a minute. But a destroy set is destroying enemy max HP. Eventually you get like a solo type of team going off a of Scarab boss and you use him for other stuff. But I'll show you where I'm using them on the free to play. And then I'll show him where I, where I use them on my main as well. So he's got two skills. The, the first one here is a turn meter drop. Basically the best single target turn meter drop in the game besides a lore. But the thing with a lore is if there's any, any more than one mob on the field, her turn meter drop spreads yeah it's random so if there's one boss like fire knight a law's the best champion in the game for that but if there's a boss with adds armager is the best champion in the game to be able to control the turn meter so all you need to make sure here is that the attack crits so you don't need to have a hundred percent crit rate and you also need enough accuracy to beat the stuff that you're you're fighting to get this turn meter drop to work so we've already got crit rate and accuracy as important parts of the build and defense is the other important stat. And then the other thing you need is speed to keep him moving. So four stats really that you're looking for on your Armager. His second skill though is the Beast Hit. So it's an enemy max HP skill. Comes in there and basically lays the nuke. Yeah, he's also got a block revive on this same skill. It's such a good ability. Like his kit for two abilities is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, it's a legendary kit on an uncommon. That's, that's not even like over-egging it. It is a legendary kit on an uncommon champion. Yeah, if, if they bought out a legendary with legendary stats with this same kit, everybody would want that legendary 100%. Okay, so don't, don't be kind of put off by the fact that his name is written in green. This guy is going to be on your account forever and you will use him forever. Yeah, so his A2 then, it's a, it's a big hit. It's not as big a hit as like a Cold Heart Enemy Max HP or a Septimus. Yeah, it basically it hits for 5% of the enemy's ma um, full health, 5%, and it caps when you get from level 21 to 25. But because it's on a two-turn cooldown, you can actually just cycle it really quick. So it's actually, although a Cold Heart's got like a 10% of the Enemy Max HP hit, that's on a four-turn cooldown. This is on a two-turn cooldown. To actually get the same value you would get from a, a cold heart in this uncommon champion. So let me take you through his build then. As I say, four, four key stats. 100% crit rate. I'm over on my free to play here. Enough accuracy to do the job. So to reduce the turn meter of the enemies that you're facing. Uh, as soon as you get towards like level 20 plus dungeons, I should have a bit more accuracy than this. I'd like another probably 30 to 40 accuracy in my build ideally. Um, enough speed to keep rotating through that ability, get your turn meter through, um, and then defense to stay alive. I'm probably a bit squishy, but it's quite hard on a free-to-play to get the stats that I want because ideally, I want what? Well, I need it in destroy set, and I'm looking for all of those key stats that I've spoken about. Speed, crit rate, accuracy, defense. Yeah, so it's a lot of stats to try and find in my gear. And you can see here as I'm going through, I'm finding them. But it's mainly with five star rare pieces. So I'm not getting like all the additional bonus stats that I could get. I've got defense percent as the main 
on the chest and I've got speed as the main on the boots. And then for masteries, I'm working towards Warmaster here. Um, but basically, I've just taken a offensive set, almost like a clan boss build with a support tree. Evil Eye is particularly good here because you get another turn meter drop on his first hit. Lore is still for stats, probably not so good when I'm using Destroy Set, honestly. But uh, in fact, Lore is still right now has given me zero benefit with the type of gear that I'm wearing. But as I progress towards his kind of final form, which I show you on my main, then that starts to play in a bit more. So on the free to play, then let me show you where I'm using him like actively at the moment. Spider is in my Spider 24 team. Yes, yeah, this is my Spider 24 team. It relies on a burn as the main kind of setup or the main damage. Helicaf as the protector, shields and block damage. And then we've got uh, Armager doing turn me to control. The Fat Man bringing me more Armager's A1. So you see the Armager A1 goes off. Actually, we open with the A2. Armager's A1 will go off now through the ally attack. So we get that big turn me to drop. And then basically we wait for the burns to do the damage. And if my armada build was perhaps a bit better and I rotated my speed a bit faster, then we might never let this spider take a turn. But as it stands right now, I've got two weaknesses with this team. One is Helicaf counterattacks every two seconds, which is annoying because it slows down my runs. Uh, but he's also protecting my team a lot, so you can't be too upset about it. And two, my armada is not quite quick enough to make sure this main spider never gets a turn. So those two things slow down my runs. But as it is, it's still like a good uh, two minute to two minute 30 team, which, you know, for anyone who's farming end game spider, which is where it's at for gear, whilst um, only been in the game for like a couple hundred days, you'll take it. Yeah, you'll take it all day long. And you can see the chunks of damage being done from this uh, enemy max HP hit with the burn. And the squad's still alive because of that block damage. Helicaf coming in trumps. The way Armada works is if the spider is less than 30% turn meter, then he defaults unless you turn it off to his A2 ability with the enemy max HP. If it is more than 30%, he will, like his AI says, I need to drop turn meter, I need to drop turn meter. Yeah, and then that's what he goes in and does. So you can see here, this is just going to run through now. And that's going to be a dead spider very, very soon. So there you see it. Spider's dead, 237. Basically in this build, because he's built to, to turn me to control and he's built in destroy set, he doesn't do a lot of damage in this build. You'll see a lot of damage when you see my main account soon. The other thing which I use him for a ton on the free-to-play is bosses. Yeah, so particularly if we were looking at like a Scarab King. Okay, this is the Scarab team I use, so high cartoon lead. She's bringing me increased speed and drop speed on the boss. Uh, I've got myself ultimate death knight in here for my shields. And then we've got Armada and Venomage destroying the main Scarab boss shield. So this is the, the fight that I do the most, actually. This is what I farm on the free-to-play, which I think used to be probably one of the harder bosses to kill. But you do kind of get the feel of how to beat it and, and kind of take it down pretty easy once you've got that sorted. Obviously, we're going to fight our way through the mobs, no problem. and there's kind of a couple of things that you need to make sure you've got going on in this fight. Look, if you get blood shield accessories, this fight becomes quite easy. Every time you hit, you get a shield. It's an easy fight. Before you get that, you need to make sure that you've got a shield up when you're hitting the boss. You need to make sure that you're putting decreased speed on the boss so that uh, you slow him down. And then you need to turn me to control him as much as you can. The more times this, this boss takes a turn, the harder this fight becomes. And honestly, it becomes pretty nasty once the boss starts taking some turns so look, i'm gonna get us through to the the main fight here and uh i'll show you what's going on okay here we go so i've set it up so that high cartoon puts us fast we get our shield up and then we start dropping turn meter we're also destroying that shield at the same time because of his um his destroy set yeah so his destroy set is doing that work we want to land decreased speed of our high cartoon whenever we can obviously we didn't land it there but all the time just keeping that turn meter down so that we can get our abilities away because once he starts taking turns we're in trouble yeah and you want to get as much work done before shields drop off like this and then we need to reapply our shields and then things like fears can go off it gets messy nobody's having a good day at that point 
But you see this, we've, we've dropped about a quarter of his shield already. My Venomage has also got the ability with Array 1 to uh, destroy enemy max HP. So when we get things like our ally attack going off, uh, we're using both of them at the same time. And Armor Dart, for an early account, is one of the best ways to do the turn meter control side. Especially in this destroy set, because when we get the provokes on us like we've got right now, he still goes in with that A1 and he still continues to destroy shields. And all the time that's being destroyed, this boss is, is basically weakening and you start to actually do some decent damage. So as long as you've got that kind of early setup done, you should be fine, even if you get to this sort of stage and he's ripping shields off you and stuff. So this is my actual like farm area. You know, this is what I do on the free to play to get um, Doom Tower farm done. It's on the Scarab boss. It's not the quickest. Like a tune, you could do with dropping the speed at least one point in this fight, if you don't mind. Shocking performance from me there. But there we go. We're just kind of like slowly but surely dropping it down. It's almost to zero. Then when it hits zero, it's, it's just like a very easy fight. Bam. See that? See the difference now? Getting chunks away. And this dude is well and truly dead. But like even though it looks like, is it still up for grabs? No, he's totally dead. He is stealing some of those cheeky hills though, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> Shield totally gone. And yeah, this guy's going to die. So I'm going to take you now onto my main account and you can see a different build. You can see this guy evolve from a kind of like free to play character to an absolute man god beast of the game who is carrying like end game stuff. So it's, it's almost like every time a new bit of content drops, People are like, oh, I don't know who to use, I don't know who to use. This guy tends to come back out. Yeah, Hydra came out, it's like, who do we use of enemy max HP? Tell you what, Armada can do the job. Twins has just come out. Who's one of the best damage dealers in the game for this? If you don't have Geo, Armada. Yeah, and, and that's the way it tends to run. So this build here is for Dragon 25. And let me show you the stats first. Similar idea, right? So it's still 100% uh, crit rate. Hold on a minute, that's 66. I'll tell you why in a minute. 100% crit rate, high defense, high speed, high crit damage. That's the, the kind of rules of my build here. Accuracy is not needed because I'm fighting Dragon 25 or I'm fighting Twins. Neither of those I can control any turn meter. So my build changes as I've got to this stage of the game. Same with Hydra. I can't control the Hydra's turn meter. So I don't need accuracy at all in the build, which means that I can push more towards damage. I'm in a reflex set because all I want to do is A2 all day long. He's not in here for turn meter anymore. He's in here to nuke the enemy's max HP. And I want it back as often as I can get it back. Um, in terms of mastery, it's actually kind of similar to what I had on the free to play. So I, I do have War Master completed here. But the rest of the masteries are pretty damn similar. And as I say, I'm in reflex gear here. So this build, we've got crit damage on the gloves. Finding the crit rate and accuracy and substats now that I've got better gear. We're looking still for that speed. Still got a defense percent chest with speed. And then speed, crit rate, accuracy. Yeah, same sort of stats that we were talking about. But the accuracy is no longer my preference. I don't really need it in the build. So it's just really speed, crit rate, crit damage, defense. And then in this build, we go after some of the proper end game stuff. And I'm looking for speed running here. So this is my Dragon 25 team. We've got Ruel, who's given us the crit rate aura. Plus, we are the positive affinity against Dragon 25, which means that we can basically lose 15% crit rate and still be crit capped. So I actually only need 65% crit rate using Ruel as my lead whilst using Armada here as well. And it's funny how, like, throughout the game, as a free-to-play, Armada is massively important in my Spider team and my Fire Knight team. I'll show you Fire Knight in a minute, actually. I didn't show you that yet. And my Scarab boss, yeah, as a free-to-play. And then when he gets to end game, he becomes a Dragon Slayer. So it's like, really? And, and in fairness, like, a lot of people use him in Ice Golem because he's got Block Revive for the side ads as well. So in terms of like the original four dungeons in the game, at different stages of his evolution, 
He's beastly in all of them. Here we go. Later rest. Smack 400k. Thanks for coming, Dragon. Plus, I'll pop a little War Master hit on you as well. And then what we're looking for is ideally getting a reflex cooldown on it as well. Yeah, so when it pops off, you're hoping to get that reflex again so that you just keep getting it back over and over again. Lay to rest, lay to rest over and over again. And basically, you're just trying to nuke down this dragon before he's even got a chance to breathe. Because it's on such a low cooldown, it'll just have it back right now. And he's like that. Lay to rest. And down he goes, a minute odd, like very consistently doing the damage and basically popping off a couple of million damage alongside my Sears 3 mil. And I've got to say, people are also using him in twins as the damage dealer. So if you're doing like a block damage comp or an unkillable comp, let's say you don't have Geomancer, who's the king of this game when it comes to twins, people are just setting them up to do the same thing you just saw there against Dragon in like a block damage or an unkillable comp so that he just gets his lay to rest away as often as possible. So we're just going to switch back to the free to play and I'm just going to show you quickly my uh, Fire Knight team as it stands right now as well. I'm not as advanced on Fire Knight as I am on the other dungeons. I'm only doing sort of stage 17, 18. Honestly, 17 is 100% for me. 18 is a little bit sketchy. I need to improve it. But because I don't have a cold heart, he comes in here again as that kind of turn me to control champion against a boss. So he doesn't bring the multi-hits like Coldheart does. Coldheart's better for that. But he does bring the same amount of turn meter control and some nukes as well. I guess onto the boss, you can see kind of where he... Like on the, the waves, kind of like, I do a bit of turn meter control. It means you're less, uh, less likely to take hits. Right, here we go then. So we're onto the boss. He's giving us a little bit of a hit. We're going to start to get our counterattacks now where Helicaf's counterattack does save us some time because we're actually getting the uh, annoying hit away. He'll do his lay to rest when the turn meter is low, like I said earlier. We've got our ally attacker here to help us break down that shield nice and quick. And then from this point on, we're trying to get, obviously, our, our debuffs away. We've got Fane doing a bit of turn meter control with an ability. And then Armaga just pumping that turn meter control in as well. So that's really his job. Yeah, that's, that's all he's in there for. Ally attackers help him do it as well. Counter attackers help him do it as well. But against the... Fire Knight, if you're just kind of struggling to keep that turn meter down, you just keep popping it back 30% at a time. And hopefully, if you, I mean, if I was perhaps in a slightly better setup here, maybe with my Hiker Tune fully leveled and giving me that kind of speed rotation as well, Armada probably is about enough to keep the turn meter down by himself once you've got a team that's going kind of quick enough and his gear is a bit better than what I've got right now. But there you go, guys. Armada. One of the best champions in the game, and he's an uncommon. Make sure you get him on your roster. But just a final word of warning. He should not be your first level 60. In fact, he should probably be about your sixth or seventh. Yeah, you want to make sure you get your clan boss team sorted first. Uh, and then, then you start to focus on dungeons, okay? But clan boss team is still the priority. Don't think, because I've done this video... I've showed him in a ton of places that you need to six time straight away. He's still useful as a 50 pretty early, but yeah, don't go thinking, oh, how Hades told me he's great, therefore first six star. That would be nonsense to do that. There you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.